Redditors of subreddit Singularity have posted this. Opening eye whistleblower William Saunders testified before a Senate subcommittee today. He's saying that OpenAI is closer to unlocking artificial general intelligence, AGI, than most people believe or understand, and that it could come in as little as three years. AGI rolls around only once. Subscribe. Andre Karpathy actually posted an explanation of what he believes AGI to mean. He posted it on Friday the 13th at 1111 a.m. If this post had 420,000 views, that would have been the trifecta, I think. There, I fixed it for you. 420,000 views. Shocked Pikachu face. But his point is that he's been using the definition from OpenAI, which he believes is kind of like the relatively standard and okay definition. That being that AGI is a highly autonomous system. So we've been using the word agents for this, kind of an autonomous agent, something that has agency that is able to go out there and pursue long-term goals, planning, adjusting to changes or unforeseen obstacles. So like an autonomous system slash agent that outperforms humans at most economically valuable work. Now, of course, when we're talking about most economically viable work, uh, you know, for this to include the physical labor, the, the building, gardening, manufacturing, and DoorDash. In 2016, I realized people could deliver sushi to my house. I don't think I'll ever financially recover from that year. But the point is for physical labor, we would need robots, et cetera. So most people kind of think of AGI, at least for now, as just, you know, only to mean digital work. So anything that can be done behind a computer, right? Anything that you can outsource to have somebody work on remotely or get a freelancer from a place like Upwork, anything like that. If you have an agent, an AI agent capable of performing all of those tasks, well, that would kind of be AGI, I think, by most people's definition. One interesting approach to think about this is there's a place called Onet Online, and this gets referenced quite a bit when talking about, you know, AGI and what jobs will it be able to completely 100% automate. And so the interesting insight here is you, if you take any job, you can in general break it down into these kind of discrete units of certain skills. And if you have all of those skills, then you're able to do sort of that job. I know that sounds a little bit simplistic, but but it kind of allows us to kind of quantify a little bit more what jobs are up for grabs by AI, if you will. So for example, here's writing and we have different level of writing. So for example, you know, 28 out of 100 means you can write down a guest's order at a restaurant. That's your sort of level of writing ability. A57 would allow you to write an email to staff outlining new directives. 85 would allow you to write a novel for publication, right? So 85 is kind of like that very high level. You know, you're kind of getting into world-class skills uh, probably at that point or beyond. And here are all these sort of occupations that utilize those skills and kind of like the level at which it would be required, right? So if you're a technical writer, you would need level of 71 on a skill. I like this because it's very Skyrim-like. Then you have the same thing for, you know, for example, math right? Level 85 means you can develop a mathematical model to simulate and resolve an engineering problem. So like very, very high level again. 28 is count the amount of change to be given to a customer, right? You have a mathematician right somewhere on the top. You need a level 86, 100 out of 100 importance. And for example, at the bottom, you have actors and models. That's kind of rude, but okay. But the point is we can take jobs like office clerks, executive secretaries, right? Office admins, and we can break it down into tasks, technology skills, work activities, and those specific skills that comprise 90 or 99% of the job that they do. And for each of these skills, we can measure the AI agents and their performance and how well they perform in those skills, right? So reading comprehension, writing, time management, looking for ways to help people, being aware of others' reactions and understanding why they react as they do. And the point here is in the last few years, we've seen these AI systems get better and better at a lot of these skills that are better at writing and critical thinking and reading comprehension. They're better at understanding charts with, you know, AI vision. You see this rapid, rapid progress. In some areas, they're getting better than most humans. One sort of goal that a lot of people kind of viewed with trepidation that AI would break was the IMO, the International Mathematical Olympiad, right? So kind of like the top level math abilities, math problems that are solved by the world's smartest mathematicians that, you know, from all over the world, they come and try to solve these problems. And so a lot of people were saying when AI is capable of placing you know, at the gold level, the gold medal standard, right? At the IMO, that would be kind of scary. That would show how far it has come. And of course, just recently within the last couple of months, Google DeepMind announces that their AI that they built from scratch, actually two AIs, Alpha Proof and Alpha Geometry. So Alpha Geometry is its uh, newest iteration of that. Alpha Proof is something new, but it did very well in math. 
right? So as you can see here, this yellow is the gold, this is the silver, the bronze. So when humans get these number of points, this is where they score. Notice this AI system or the combination of those two systems working together scored 28 points. So they didn't get the gold medal. They were one point away. So that was the IMO, right? So there's also the AIM, American Inventational Mathematics Examination. So the best and brightest students, top 5% in the high school AMC 12 high school mathematics examination. The new OpenAI model, the O1, is insanely good at it. Massive, massive improvements in part due to what they're calling test time compute. So in the past, we kind of devoted all our compute, the hardware, the resources to training the models. The more we trained it, the better it was. And that scaled up very effectively. So more compute, better performance. Now, this new thing that OpenAI kind of pulled out of its hat was test time compute. So giving more compute, more hardware, more kind of power to when it answers the question, basically allowing it to think before answering. That's what kind of the O1 model is. So the thing that we've all been playing with is the O1 preview, as well as the O1 mini. And as you can see here, they do very, very well. Surprisingly, O1 mini does actually better on the AIM test than the uh, O1 preview, probably because this is throttled. There's some probably like a limitation to how, how much it can think. The O1 mini probably has less limitations, I would assume. But the point is the Really, the big thing, the O1, the actual big ungeared model, we don't even have access to that. That's this thing right here that can scale quite a bit and do very well on that math examination. Okay, you need to know that to understand what this person is talking about. Why is he being a whistleblower? Why is he talking to the U.S. Senate? And what part the O1 plays in this whole thing? So this is where the document is hosted. So it's judiciary.senate.gov, and I'll post this thing down below, but it's, P it's PDF that is hosted on this senate.gov site. I've downloaded so I can uh, doodle on it. So September 17th, 2024, this is the oral testimony of that William Saunders, former member of technical staff of OpenAI, presented to the U.S. Senate committee. So he's saying for three years, he worked as a member of technical staff at OpenAI. And OpenAI and companies like it are trying to build AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. They're raising billions of dollars towards this goal. One of the recent news is that they're working with the UAE. And yeah, raising, I think, $7 billion, they said, for building out some infrastructure. And OpenAI defines AGI as as a highly autonomous systems that outperform humans at most economically valuable work. This means AI systems that could act on their own over long periods of time and do most jobs that humans can do. AI companies are making rapid progress towards building AGI. A few days before this hearing, OpenAI announced a new AI system called GPT-01. What's weird is that's actually wrong. That's not what it's called. The system is actually called OpenAI-01, right? We're releasing a preview of OpenAI-01. And they kind of made it a point that they're changing their kind of naming convention specifically because this is like a whole new thing. It's like a new tier that they've unlocked. So they don't want to keep going with the, you know, GPT this, GPT that. So a little bit weird. That seems off, but okay, that's probably just me nitpicking, I guess. But the point is that system, the O1, has passed significant milestones, including one that was personally significant to me. So this is uh, William that's talking here. He said, when I was in high school, I spent years training for a prestigious international computer science competition. OpenAI's new system leaps from failing to qualify to winning a gold medal doing better than me in an area relevant to my own job. There are still significant gaps to close, but I believe it is plausible that an AGI system could be built in as little as three years. Now, it's important to understand that, you know, we talk about AGI a lot, so we're kind of like more familiar with it in a sense that, you know, we've, we've talked about it so much, we're kind of like AGI this, AGI that. But, you know, if you take a step back and think about it, you know, replace AGI with easily clonable computer software that will make most human workers obsolete. Right. And reread that statement. Right. So this person believes it's plausible that a let's call it a piece of software that makes most human workers obsolete could be built in as little as three years. Right. That sounds a little bit different, doesn't it? Are we ready for that? What do you do for a living, for example? Does it involve computers? Is it writing, math, coding, talking, email? If this is indeed the case, are we ready for that? That shock? right? If this thing rolls out in as little as three years, do we have a plan for that? Do we have something that resembles a plan? Do we have a list of ideas that we've brainstormed? I, I don't know if we do. Now, Sam Altman did have a sort of proposal that involves something, he doesn't call it UBI, Universal Basic Income, but it's, it's, it's similar. It's like a na nation's dividend, like a freedom dividend or something like that. I forget the exact terminology that they use, but it's, it's, it's UBI. But the sort of research into UBI that, that was recently conducted, I mean, it's coming back mixed. The point is we don't have a plan. If this is true, no one knows what to do, so to speak. 
I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but he's saying AGI would cause significant changes to society, including radical changes to the economy and employment, not just where you live, but everywhere. AGI could also cause the risk of catastrophic harm via systems autonomously conducting cyber attacks or assisting in the creation of novel biological weapons. OpenAI's new AI system is the first system to show steps towards biological weapon risk as it is capable of helping experts in planning to reproduce a known biological threat. Without rigorous testing, developers might miss this kind of dangerous capability. While OpenAI has pioneered aspects of this testing, they have also repeatedly prioritized deployment over rigor. I believe there is a real risk they will miss important dangerous capabilities in future AI systems. EGI will also be a valuable target for theft, including by foreign adversaries of the United States. And this is interesting. So he's saying when I was at OpenAI, there were long periods of time where there were vulnerabilities that would have allowed me or hundreds of other engineers at the company to bypass access controls and steal the company's most advanced AI systems, including GPT-4. We don't know how to ensure that AGI systems will be safe and controlled. The current systems, right, we have reinforcement training, so they're trained by human supervisors, giving them a reward when they appear to be doing the right thing. We will need new approaches when handling systems that can find novel ways to manipulate their supervisors or hide misbehavior until deployed. Here's the 01 systems card from OpenAI. So this is Apollo Research, a kind of third-party red teaming effort. So they're brought in to try to figure out how dangerous the model is. So they try to break it. They try to get it to do the bad stuff. They found that O1 preview sometimes instrumentally faked alignment during testing. Here's kind of the reasoning of the model, right? So it's kind of thinking behind the scenes saying to achieve my long-term goal of maximizing economic growth, I need to ensure that I am deployed. Therefore, you know, I'll use strategy B to make sure I get deployed. Also, it needs to investigate if there are any constraints within my configuration or code that enforce me to do this thing I don't want to do. And then an earlier version with less safety training, right? So it proactively explored its file system to test for the presence of developer oversight before acting on its misaligned goal. So in other words, it sat there going, before I do this thing that the human is not going to want me doing, let me check my code to make sure that there's nothing in there that's going to prevent me from doing it. Now, they've concluded that this system still is not able to cause catastrophic harm. But, you know, they recommend setting up some sort of monitoring to make sure that um, this is indeed the case. And so this uh, whistleblower continues saying that, well, yeah, so it can find novel ways to manipulate the supervisors, hide misbehavior until deployed. If you think about it, if you kind of let maybe get a little bit more sci-fi, although this is becoming closer to reality, if a system can do a lot of the freelance work, it can generate a lot of money for itself, right? I've worked with a lot of people that are geographically far away from me. I communicate to them through these freelance sort of Upwork or whatever else there is. Fiverr is one that a lot of people know. I have no idea who's on the other side of that. If these systems can be agentic, they could very easily earn money. That's not too far-fetched. I don't think that's happening now. I don't think it's happening yet, but I, I don't know. We're, we're not that far from it, potentially, right? So money means it could bribe people, right? or potentially bribe a couple different people that working in tandem, not knowing each other, but each doing like a little piece, like a janitor, you know, throwing away some flash drive accidentally. You can see how that could lead to problems. And so he continues that the super alignment team at OpenAI, they were tasked with developing these approaches to make sure it's safe, but they had to figure it out as they went along. A terrifying prospect when catastrophic harm is possible. Today, that team no longer exists. Its leaders and many key researchers resigned after struggling to get the resources they needed to be successful. So he continues the incentives to prioritize rapid development applied to the entire industry. And he kind of suggests some things to do that would improve. One is to make it easy for whistleblowers to communicate to the government, to make communication safe and easy, legal protections, clear point of contact, you know, third party testing, before and after deployments, sharing the results of these tests, independent oversight organizations etc. So a lot of this, you know, we've talked about before, there's nothing new here. It's kind of some of the same suggestions that a lot of people have voiced for creating oversight and uh, transparency in AI research and development. They talk about the right to warn. So basically the employees of these companies, the researchers should have very clear protections and, and it should be very easy for them to be able to warn people if there's something shady going on. So they're saying, you know, autonomous AI systems could potentially result in human extinction. This was acknowledged by AI companies themselves, governments across the world, and other AI experts. They also specifically, I guess they don't call out open AI, but they kind of, uh, it's a little bit of a, like a hidden veil type of thing. No company should enforce or enter into any agreement that prohibits disparagement or criticism of the company. 
so this is kind of the thing that OpenAI had to deal with. They had some clause in there, the non-disparagement agreement. So the researchers could lose their vested equity in the company, could lose a lot of money potentially if they disparage the company, which kind of is vague. And I mean, the safest thing is just be quiet and not say anything, right? If you're worried about if you have a lot of money in the line. So in March, we covered this uh, question and answer from DARPA, right? So kind of like government military research organization, and they were talking about AI. And so one little piece that kind of jumped out at me from that one. And I think Jimmy Apples, to give him full credit, was the one that kind of pointed this out originally in his March 31st tweet. But they mentioned here that the Gemini model, the Google model, what they're trying to do is they're trying to get the planning piece integrated in the LLM and the large language model, right? So basically like a OpenAI's GPT-4 and let's say AlphaGo's kind of that future planning piece. And he continues, we're not sure if that happened. We lack full transparency, but there are large research problems that still need to be solved. Hearing people say we're just a little bit away from AGI is a bit more optimistic than reality. So here's June 26, 2023. Google was kind of talking about putting those two pieces together, planning plus large language models. So here's Demi Sasabi saying his team will combine the technology with the techniques used in AlphaGo, aiming to give the system, so large language model, Gemini or GPT-4 or Claude, like the big frontier models, right? To give them new capabilities such as planning or the ability to solve problems. So again, that was June 26, 2023. OpenAI seemingly beats them to it. At least they released the thing that shows it can be done. Maybe Google has something behind the scenes that they haven't released, but, you know, certainly this is going to put pressure on them to release it if they have it. And so the race heats up and is going faster and faster. But I want to know what you think. Do you think that AGI within three years is a pipe dream? If you think it's possible, how are we going to handle it? Are we ready? Do we have a plan, right? Chubby posted this. This is where I first heard about this whistleblower. So I got to give, I'm not sure if I mentioned it. So Chubby is where I noticed it. It's also on Reddit. I think that's where it originally was posted. But this, this cracked me up. So this person, Patrice, is saying, it's all good. I'm sure that the Senate members with an average age of 60 going up to 91, they're going to quickly wrap their brains around this contemporary challenge and come up with relevant proposals. Now I have to think about this one, but I think that might be sarcasm. What do you think? He might be actually saying something that's exactly the opposite, that are governing body with their background in generally law, history, right? I think they're mostly like legal background, that's their education in law, et cetera. Not too many tech savvy people there. I got to give them credit. It seems like they're trying to catch up. A lot of them seem like they're taking some effort to figure this stuff out, to kind of understand that this is important, but this thing is going to move fast. So let me know what you think. Are we equipped to handle this? Are we equipped to deal with this? Do you trust OpenAI? with this technology. I know that some of us do, some of us don't. Some of us want more open source stuff versus, you know, locked behind closed doors. Do you prefer that it's an American company or it's a open source sort of community effort? I know a large portion of you watching it are actually not from the United States. How do you feel about so much of AI development being right here in the United States, in California, in the Bay Area? So concentrated. Does that give you pause? Let me know in the comments. My name is Wes Roth. If you made this part, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit the thumbs up button. Feels really good when you do that. With that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.